Hey everybody, Mark here again. Okay, so as I mentioned in my last video with the mail delivery that I was gonna do two fusion builds. So I have the ceramic super stock. This I bought from as a in a kit from Wizard. And this is the kit. Sorry about that light. And I did the end bell option and I did the build your own kit, all parts to complete a super stock car. So it came in at $90. So this kit was $90 that we're going to put together here. All right, so the kit does come with everything. Comes with the chassis, comes with a balanced hot stock armature, uh, your end bell. This end bell's already tweaked and it already has the, um, the curves in the brush. It's almost like it's already broken in for you. Um, not too much you have to do to these fusion end bells. They're pretty good right right from the get-go. Um, came with the ceramic motor and traction magnets. So we'll be using those. Uh, rear axle. This is a non-magnetic stainless axle. It's pretty light. Um, the only thing I wasn't happy with is it actually came with a 23 tooth crown gear, which I'm not going to use. I use a 22 tooth crown gear on my super stock cars. So I'm going to use this rear end axle and 22 tooth gear that I already had s sitting around, um, for this build. But I do want to try the tires. These are like a four like a four two four I think when I used my gauge on them pretty low profile um, came with an independent front end it is a plastic independent front end um, 0 0.320 front tires I believe these were um, pretty, pretty low. Let me get my gauge and take a quick look at that. And again, you don't have any choices on these tires. This is what their kit, this is, um, this is Wizard's vision of, yeah, so this is a 320. 320 front tire and the rear tire was like a 422 somewhere around there so, um, the only thing it didn't come with which I was surprised was the axle pins I had to use some of my own spare fusion axle pins that I had it was already pre-drilled which is nice the chassis pre-drilled so I didn't have to do that. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this motor in. Oh, well, first I wanna, I need to space the, um, yeah, there's no, I wanna put like a little Teflon washer on there. I have all my little spacers and washers in here. I don't like when the armature has, you know, if you put a metal spacer on there, it almost looks like it could short out. So I'm going to put this really thin, I don't even know what 
size this is, to be honest with you. I had an armature that had like three or four of these plastic spacers on it and it were too many, so I took some off it. So I ended up getting some of these. And I am gonna start off with, I, I always usually put like a 10,000 metal spacer. Usually gives it the right amount of spacing on these wizards, although with the plastic spacer in there too, we'll see how it looks. So we're gonna take our tool, our end bell spreading tool, goes in there and when you turn that, you can see it opens up the, the ears there. And you can put your armature in there, take that out. So I'm going to look at this under my light for my magnifying light for a second, just to see how this, see where this, uh, where the brushes are sitting on this commutator. I think it looks pretty good. That's going to be fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, what I like about these fusion end bells is they already have the hangers. They're just molded right into the, the end bell, so it really makes assembly pretty easy I and mean, this is even easier than building a viper so um what i like to do is i'll put the rear um bushing on and then i'm going to use the stock this pinion gear since i am kind of building a stock super sport with all wizard parts because i just want to see how it runs i like to put that on and then I put this in without the magnets. So I can kind of see. Oop. Let's get the, you want to make sure the bushing is sitting in there. So you can see we got a lot of space to make up in there, like a lot. <laughs> so I got to space that. So just for the sake of time on this video, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to space this out and then I'll show you how many spaces I ended up having to use. So I'll be right back. All right, so I ended up using two 20,000 and a 5,000 spacer. And we got just, just enough play in there. And this spins nice and smooth. So I'm going to use my little spreader tool here, pop this back out. And we'll leave all that like that. We'll get our motor magnets. These go in the same as a a viper so when I build mine I put the front of the armature or the end bell to the left and the white magnet goes on the top just like that and then, yeah, there's, there's nothing to worry about. There's no hangers to worry about clearing tabs or anything like that. You literally just put this in here. Kind of push it down and that's it. I mean, it's in. Motor's in, just like that. Feels good.
since I have this open, I'm going to give this a little dab of oil. Yeah, then the rest is take our traction magnets and do the same thing. I put them in high down force, so you want the side to... These are, they don't go in, there's, you could put it in either way, so it doesn't matter. Just make sure you, the side that's sticking to the motor magnet, you put facing the rail. So this one is going to go in like this. And this one's gonna go in like that. Take our magnet clip here. Just make sure your, you know, the magnets are seated properly in the in the clip there just like that that looks good um all right Let me go ahead and we'll put the guide pin in real quick. Could have probably did that first. So there's several settings. It's recommended to do it on these fusions, the one just before the end. So you don't you don't go all the way to the end with the with the uh, guide pin. There we go. That was a little difficult, but so you see how there's a little bit of space there where you can go one more, but it's basically been decided from a lot of guys building these and playing around with the pin position that that's the one you use. So that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Pins back in. Um, yeah, I got to build the rear end still, but we'll get to that. I'm going to put the independent front end on. And it goes in the middle hole. And they actually sent it with one of the... Uh, Pressing fittings already pushed on, so. I actually like to put, this This axle's long enough where you could put a 10,000 spacer on each side, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that in between the hub and the chassis. can see that spacer there. Um, if 
the other the other one I I put the retaining tab down and I put the hub over it so that the uh, the retaining tabs under there and let me get my other my other spacer. Get a little hammer and I just tap this. So hold on, I'm just gonna finish this. I'm gonna pause for a second. All right, so we've got the independent front end on. Feels good, nice and smooth. We'll put our pickup shoes on. So these these pickup shoes actually have a one side is wider than the other. I put the smaller circle over the little, it's like a little post in there. And I, I leave the wider, the wider circle underneath the uh, pickup shoe. Not sure if that's correct or not, to be honest with you, but kind of makes sense to me. good guys I'm trying to do this standing up leaning over the camera <laughs> it's not that easy hold on I'm just gonna pause this for a second all right we are pretty much done with the exception of the rear end so um, just for the sake of time I'm gonna take the rear end out of my other super stock and pop it in here this pinion gear on a little more hold on all right that feels really smooth really nice let's um let's pop it on the dyno real quick and i have to break it in too but we'll, we'll do a quick little run on the dyno Not bad. Hitting a three nine seven four. Getting better and better. Climbing up. So that sounds good. That's what we want. So I'm gonna let that break in. I'm gonna take the rear axle out. Put it on the braking mode on the dyno. Let it run for a little while. So yeah, that's it. I mean, it's it's pretty easy to build. I think I'll I'm gonna do tomorrow. I might do a live, a live.
live feed and I'll build this, um, the spec racer. I'll do the whole build. I'll do the rear end. I'll show you how I build the, you know, put the crown gear on and the hubs on using, using the presses. So we'll do a complete build there. And, um, yeah, then we'll, we'll run some laps with them, see how they run. And I'm curious to compare them to my two existing, um, this Fusion was, Spec Racer was built by Rooster Racing for me. Steven built that. Um, this is going to have the same armature. I'm putting the same Joker armature, six ohm hot stock armature in my, the other Spec Racer Fusion. This ceramic super stock I actually bought used. This actually has the hood system. Uh, this car runs real good. I got it for a really good price. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how this super stock compares to the the all wizard one. All right, guys. Hope this video wasn't too long. It's a little over twenty minutes, but. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hit me up in the comments, and I'll talk with you guys soon. Thanks.